chap welcome along to the vlog so we're in the beer garden this morning and we're getting ready to open the pub again so we were given the announcement yesterday on uh, in the House of Commons by Prime Minister Boris Johnson that we are to begin opening pubs and restaurants from the 4th of July so that is the plan Let's just take ourselves into the brewery and uh, we'll have a little bit of a chat about it so the plan is we need to put in place a booking system a register for clients or customers that come in and uh, adhere to social distancing one meter plus so that means we're going to have to erect some type of screening system hang on let me put you on a tripod yeah so we're gonna have to put up some type of screening between tables we're gonna have to put uh, uh rearrange the tables and the seating we're gonna have to put in place table service and uh, all the rest of it so there's lots of new regulations that we're gonna have to stick to which are right and they're proper we have to do this two reasons First one is obviously the safety and well-being of our staff members and ourselves. And uh, secondly, but not necessarily in that order, the safety and well-being of customers. So we need to make sure that we don't make anybody poorly by spreading the virus because we want everyone to come back and enjoy a beer and something to eat. So I don't know whether we're going to open up full tilt because we're going to have to do table service anyway. So I suppose opening the kitchen for food wouldn't be a big stretch on in terms of resources because we're gonna be waiting tables anyway uh, so that kind of makes me think we go full food and drink instead of just being wet late for the first instance but we'll see it's gonna be it's gonna be changing and uh, when the regulation comes out and we know more then we'll be able to tell you guys more but we've got about 10 days to prepare for it so I'm very excited uh, you notice on the canal as well when we came in there absolutely beautiful day today yesterday was one of the hottest days of the year so far and I think today is gonna beat that too so we need to make sure that everything in here is working the chillers and everything like that because they're gonna be working really hard to keep the the hops cold the yeast cold and in particular the beer that we want ready for everybody in the next couple of weeks to be uh, at the right temperature we're also going to start putting some of that beer into can as i said on yesterday's video i'm really looking forward to getting moving with that we've got a tank of vacant and a tank of proof of concept that we can start pushing in there and take a breath harry we have begun to work on a website a good friend uh has decided that he wanted to help out with the uh, the design of the website and uh over the past couple of weeks they've been working behind the scenes on it and it's ready to go all we need to do is populate it with the right content and all the pages that we need which is going to be a lot of work as well so that on top of uh, the schedule for getting the pub ready means that we're going to be extremely busy over the next few days so uh, just stick around stick with me i'm sure there'll be a few uh, sporadic sporadic updates finding their way onto the internet but by no means are we going to be doing any uh, filmography of any sort so you're just going to have to stick with this pretty loose format for the time being so this morning i'm going to just have a quick tidy up whip around get my mind engaged away from filming a youtube video and into uh brewer publican mentality and we're going to try to uh, pick out or triage the most important jobs that need doing first and we'll tackle them head on today so let's get to it so first job of the day we're recirculating the vacant so we've got all the dry hops in the tank we've got the beer coming out of the racking arm through the pump and into the bottom port so all of this has obviously been sanitized with this little sanitizing setup i've made and then i flushed it through as you can see with that beer in that little container there with uh, 
until beer comes out and then I've tightened the RJT fit in and then we've opened the valves to let it start recirculating. So what I'm gonna do is now go up to the top of the tank and then up here we have a newly installed CO2 line. We're gonna at some point in the future install little automated solenoid valves on a timer to inject a purge of CO2 into each tank sort of uh, for a couple of seconds once every hour to keep it topped off uh, but for now we just have to do it manually and as you can see there's a lot of hops still floating around on the surface so I'm gonna go and get a sanitized spoon and just dip them under water there's the tilt over there look and then uh, then we'll top off with CO2 again to make sure that it's nicely sealed but this seems to be a system that's working and I can already smell the hop aroma of this beer has increased dramatically thanks to doing a couple of recirculations. Second job of the day. I don't know if I showed you this on a previous video but we made a mould for some pier caps and I was hoping to have HB as an impression in there. Kind of didn't work. So... <laughs> The timbers come off and stuck inside. I think that's going to be a stretch too far trying to get that out of there, to be honest. Uh, so what I might do is try this again, but maybe with no HB logo or perhaps a less deep one. And look at the state of the mould. I need smoother timbers than that. So it's not really worked because of the creases and dimples. And also, there's a crack. Runs all the way along from one side to the other. So while it was a good try, and it probably would be fine, I think that is gonna go in the fucky bucket, I'm afraid. But you know, it was worth a go, wasn't it? It was worth a go. Moving along with the jobs for today. Oh, it never gets boring that. Let's just zoom out a little bit so we can really take this in. So I've changed the solenoid valves at the back of the machine. Here they are. They're working seamlessly. And as you can see on the filler heads, we're not really dripping. You can see the surface tension is holding those drips into place. And apart from the occasional one which lets go, which isn't a problem, I think we've cracked that kind of uh, issue. So I'm happy with how this is working. I'm just recirculating some Persid through the system. This is how we'd actually clean it, but not necessarily with all these cans on the side. So what my intentions are here is to see how easy it is in production to uh, take the cans off of the conveyor section or slide if you like and how many cans this little can push system at the end can push before it starts crumpling these cans up at this end. So you can see that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine full cans on the machine. And if we go and have a little scan along the top, you can see that the fill levels, well, I've been weighing them, they're all within around five milliliters around they're generally always over 440 how it's set up so we're getting like 444 445 442 that kind of thing very rarely do we get like a 450 but if we did then when you put the lid on that would displace a lot of that beer anyway the only risk is there'd be no air gap or foam which would in in time turn into co2 to compensate for any over pressurization so I'd rather just go around the 440 to 445 mil mark to be on the safe side. But anyway, nine cans all in a row. Press the start button. Apart from that little fella popping up there a little bit, we don't seem to have any issues at all. And if we're pushing nine cans at a time, then quite frankly, we're, you know, going too slow on the seamer. And if I'm honest, the way I was going on that seamer yesterday, 
it ain't going to be a problem at all. Oh, would you just look at her. She's a beautiful piece of engineering, even if I do say so myself. Anyway, let's empty these cans now. I might just turn this off so that they sit in the solution. That'll keep it sanitary. We can turn these off as well independently. I'll put these on just in case. And then I'll go and flick the pump off. So that was with the pump. So in retrospect, after we've changed the solenoid sizes and scaled them up a bit, I'll just turn this off here. Then yeah, we can definitely get the flow rates that we want via pump if we decide to go that route. But I think we'll still do the keg way. Well, I'm about finished, folks. It's half past bloody seven. I've done it again. Stopped too late. I shouldn't, really. I got started with this project. Yeah, I really shouldn't have started this today. Uh, and I've run out of gas as well, so bloody hell. My welds have gone downhill rapidly. You know, started nice. Started nice in the corner there. And get that shot. Let's go back to the normal camera. There we go. Not bad. Yeah, not bad weld. Start running out of gas. And yeah, that happens. So I've tried putting it on straight up CO2 and straight up argon. Wouldn't have it. Definitely Argo Shield is the way to go. So Ah well, never mind. Uh, I also uh, cocked up on one or two at corners as well. Did an inside corner weld there instead of an outside corner. And uh, that's too far apart for what I was going to do originally. But you know what? It is what it is. I'm just going to paint it and put it up. Nobody knows what it was meant to look like, do they? Apart from me. So nobody can say it's not right. Because they haven't seen the plans. Because there weren't any. But there we go. It's late and I'm tired and uh, I'm really worried that this gate's going to be too fucking heavy to load onto a frame but it uh, shouldn't be a problem. Right, I'm wrapping up folks. That's another day in the brewery. Uh, nine days till the pub's open. So, uh, well, lots to do, lots to do. I'll see you later. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking then. Cheers. Ciao.